going to talk about Joomla 2.5. How many people know that this is the next long-term support release for Joomla? Well, that's pretty good, actually. I'm happy to see that, actually. At least people are paying attention. Um, this, uh, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, anyway, we're going to talk about the Joomla 2.5 and the path ahead. So we're going to talk about what's coming after 2.5, uh, things of that nature. Uh, my name is Kendall Cave, as Danny said. Uh, I'm with, uh, I own my own company with a business partner, Times 2 Technology. We work primarily with implementing Joomla products, uh, implementing Joomla sites, putting things in, uh, utilizing what's out there, doing some custom development, uh, working with partners to do other aspects that, you know, they do better than us, uh, things they do all the time, whereas, you know, there's, you can only learn so much in this world. So if you don't have good partners to help you where you're, where you don't have that expertise, then you're missing out on a lot of potential business. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, my email, direct phone number, uh, please feel free to call. Um, this is what we're going to go over. We're going to talk about what you know, what is 2.5, uh, what's new in it. Should I actually migrate? Um, then we're going to look at you know if you're going to some gotchas and so basically a checklist of how to go from 1.5 to 2.5. And then we're going to look at the path ahead, uh, Joomla 3.x and beyond, uh, the release cycle as it is now, and some idea of what the Joomla roadmap is, which before you ask, there isn't really one that exists anywhere on the web, but there's, we'll get into why that doesn't happen, um, and we'll talk about you know, what is actually available out there. All right, so let's get into all about Joomla 2.5. So what is it? This is currently the most stable release of the cycle. It's the end of the cycle. Back in January of last year, Joomla started a release cycle that comes out every six months. Joomla 2.5 is the next long-term support release. So it will be supported until December of 2013. So if you don't want to worry about getting on the latest, greatest thing uh, in updates, when 3.0 comes out, you can use 2.5 and it will be supported all the way through the end of December 2013 where it goes into life and is no longer supported. By that point, you're going to want to have a plan in place of how I'm actually going to get rid of, you know, how I'm going to go from 2.5 to 3.5, which will be the next long-term support. <clears throat> Current version, as of today, it is 2.5.1. So there actually was a version that came out today. If you're still on 1.7 because some extension you have is not updated, there is also a 1.7.5 that came out. Uh, I recommend updating to both of them, especially if you install 2.5.0 because there were some issues. You may not have hit them, but there were some issues that were fixed. Uh, and that came out today, so there's at least like 10 or 15 things I think that got fixed in the last week. So it was a big, huge push by the bug squad to get a lot of stuff taken care of. So let's take a look at what some of the new stuff is in Joomla. In Joomla, you've got a, if you are not aware, as of Joomla 1.7, I believe, they split the platform. So now you have the platform, which is Joomla platform, and you have Joomla CMS. Joomla CMS utilizes the platform. So now it's actually an application built on top of the platform as of Joomla 1.7. We are running platform version 11.3 in Joomla 2.5. So the next version after that should be 12.1. Uh, I think they released 11.4 at the end of last year. But the platform will start renumbering this year with 12.1, 12.2, you know, whenever they make releases. At the time at which a release is going to come out, the platform is going to be chosen as to which one they're going to stick into the CMS. So you may not have the latest and greatest platform. In theory, not necessarily in practice, you might actually be able to download the platform yourself and replace it. But that's in theory, because there may be some changes in the platform that are not reflected in the CMS and it may just blow up. So your best bet is to stick with what the CMS produces and then you know it's all going to work together. Smart Finder. This is cool. It's actually a complete rebuild of the search engine for the Joomla website. It is not going to be by, turned on by default. You will have to actually activate it yourself, but it will replace the search functionality. It actually has great improvements over the searching that was in Joomla previously. If you've ever used it, you know that it was horrible. It rarely found what you were actually after. So Smart Finder is actually going to make it nice. It may actually be close to the Google search itself as far as how it works. Uh, I have not had enough time to play with it, 
I've seen the screenshots and actually have talked to one of the this developers that was working on building this part of it. Another piece is multiple database support. Now you can actually run Joomla in native support with MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and I think Microsoft Azure database works with that too. Right. And then they're working on, hopefully soon, we'll be releasing the drivers to actually deal with Oracle and PostgreSQL as well. So Joomla is now heading towards being able to use more enterprise level databases that will be things that people will recognize, hey, you support this, this is a good thing. Because right now it's MySQL only uh, before version 2.5. There are mobile enhancements. Joomla 2.5 in the bees template was completely rewritten to actually have built-in mobile support. So if you're looking for a template to base something on that already has mobile support built into it, the core bees template does that. It was heavily tested back in December when we had the Joomla bugs and fun, bug squash that we had. Um, worldwide, people were fixing bugs, and one of the groups was doing nothing but testing the Bees template on mobile devices. They had everybody in the room that was helping test with their phones, playing around with the Bees template on a website. It's kind of interesting to see the little pictures and stuff they were sending out about people doing that. People just sitting here punching on their little phones. It's kind of fun. Uh, language overrides. Couldn't do this before. You actually had to change the language file. Now you can actually, in the language manager, go in and override strings that are in the Joomla site without having to change the language file, which means that the language file stays the same, but now you can build overrides so that you don't have to change everything again when you do the next upgrade. Kind of nice to have that if you're actually, especially if you're working with foreign languages or if you're working with Stuff you just want to change because a client doesn't like a certain term, you may actually be able to go in and change it for them. Update notification module. How many people want to know when there's a new version out? <laughs> Without having to go to the Joomla.org site. Now it's in your back end. Thanks to Nicholas from Akiba Backup, his was already doing it, so he submitted it to the Joomla organization, to the project, and now it's in there. If you've got a 250 site, go look at the notification <coughs> modules right big on your screen and it'll tell you, 251's here. So they actually are there and they work. Captcha support, been really needed for a long time. Um, I think it actually works with reCAPTCHA as well, So, but you have to set up an account with that group to actually be able to use it. But this is on the user registration only. It is not on the contact forms, only user registration. But you can actually put it in and physically be able to have a CAPTCHA on your registration form with Core Joomla. You don't have to add any more plugins anymore to get it to work. If you need it elsewhere, you may have to still look for a plugin to take care of that. I believe by default it is not turned on, so you may have to go in and check for the plugin and configure it and then turn it on. Article images. This has been a big one that people have been after. In the platform, they've added a JImage class and some other things to the platform itself that have actually allowed this to happen. You can now assign articles directly to, or images directly to an article for both being used on blog views, for the sample the little picture that would go with it, as well as putting articles as a main article inside the main view of the article itself, the detail view more or less. So you can attach an image to an article and it just shows up. Now you can probably do some tweaking with CSS to make it show up differently, but it's there. You couldn't do that before. Whereas with some of the content construction kits that are out there, like K2 and some of the others, that was part of their stuff. So now that's coming into Core Joomla. Video also? No, not video yet. They have not set it up with video. Um, so it's kind of, and there's still, I think there's still some issues with the core templates and possibly with the Joomla core itself that there's something that gets put in that makes it more difficult to do HTML5 and CSS3. There was up until recently and they may have fixed it. I know there was something in the J include header that you put in there for a template that still loaded some kind of term to say use HTML4 instead of 5, but they may have fixed it. So I know that was a discussion somebody was having is like, you know, this really is not a good thing. We need to make sure we can put our own stuff in. Um, so here are some references that I use to pull out all the new stuff. I didn't have time to run through and play with all these things, but the ones I have actually been able to play with have been really cool. It's nice additions to the Joomla core. It's making it that much better. Um, if you're doing multi-language sites, don't immediately assume you need Joomfish to do it. 
look at the core. The core will do multilingual now. It has been doing it since 1.7. So it's actually very, it's actually getting much better. They're still making improvements to it. But you can make multilingual sites straight out of the Joomla core now, whereas in 1.5, you could not. It was difficult to do. You could have one language, but you couldn't have multiple for the same article and have it show up in English and French or English and whatever. It was more difficult to do in 1.5. But these are two articles, the Joomla Community Magazine. How many people read this on a regular basis? Wow. Why aren't you? Uh, Magazine.joomla.org. Check it out. They have the back issues. There's articles in there from designers, developers, general community users. There's a series going on right now being written by, I think, Jim Kramer that's talking about the ACL. So if you need to learn about using groups and permissions, read it because she's really good. She does, she's done a lot of digging. She does a lot with it, and she's putting these out there free on the magazine site. Um, check into that. There's a lot of case studies out there as well that are in use. If you're interested in getting involved in the community, this is not a bad place to do it if you're a writer and you got something to, to say. They're always looking for authors. So it'd be a good place to get in. And then one of our uh, coordinators for the Southside group also put out a pretty good article. Um, the one I couldn't find the link to because I was trying to find it in my Twitter feed and couldn't find it. There is a article put out by Joomla Art, I think it was, or John Social, one of the two, and I can't remember which, that was talking about going to 2.5. It turned out to be more of a how-to to migrate from 1.5 to 2.5 than it was a talk about 2.5. So the article was more about the migration, which gives a pretty good checklist, so you may want to dig up for that. Uh, it's floating around on Twitter right now. So, anybody have any questions about what's coming in 2.5 or what's new in 2.5? Anything anybody has questions on, needs to know more about? Can you go back to that list and describe that question? There are probably some other things that have actually come in that are not necessarily big features, but things that have changed. Uh, if you read the article in the community magazine, there's a whole list at the bottom that gives you an idea of what changed from 1.5 to 2.5 uh, and what came in during 1.6, 1.7, and 2.5. So that actually gives a little more about what little things may be different from one to the other two. Any question? Yes. Yeah. The, uh, the extension that you should have out that makes the upgrade easier as a PRP? There's, as we'll get to five, it. Right? We'll okay. get to it. Yeah. Can I assume by its lack of presence here, there's no changes in ACL? Not that I'm aware of. There may be some minor improvements, but the ACL itself stayed basically the same as it was in 1.6. Yeah, there's no, I don't think there's anybody been working on it because they put out what fit well for the Joomla community in relation to, while it may not be the best thing to learn, they made a decision to go that route for a lot of reasons, one of them being multilingual, because when you look at taking that ACL screen and converting it into a foreign language, and especially like German, if you had laid it out like some people had suggested, well, your screen would stretch from there to here just to do the regular stuff. I mean, it was literally an issue of internationalization. That's why they did it vertically instead of horizontally. Horizontally would actually make it read better, but down vertically actually fits for the, the international community. So for once, they were actually thinking about the international community instead of just, just English. I have the impression when, with the move from 1.5 to 1.6, that the ACL is still a work in progress, got a lot better, but it was on a path. It has been, yeah, from 1.6 to 1.7, it, I think there were some changes put in, but I did not see anything mentioned about there being any other major updates to 1.7 to 2.5. There may have been some minor bug fixes that people may have found, but there's no, there's been no big push to change anything about ACL. Yes? Uh, could you remind us what the uh, support dates are for 1.5 and 1.6? It's coming. In the slides later. It's in the path ahead. Okay. Any other questions? The, the smart binder isn't just for the Joomla.org website, right? It's no, it's it's a Joomla plugin. It works on any 2.5 site. So it, you've got to go into the plugins and actually enable it because the other search is still there. You have to turn that one off and turn the smart finder on. Um, it does index your content, so it may take some time for it to be there. It's going to work better on the larger sites. 
Smaller sites, you're not going to get a huge benefit out of it. The search on a smaller site is good enough that's in the core Joomla. The Smart Finder will work better with larger amounts of content, but it still will work even on a smaller site. Okay, the big question, should I migrate? The short answer is, and it always is, it depends. If you're happy with your site, everything's working fine, you don't think you're ever going to need to make any changes to it, which is almost never going to happen, um, and you really want to sit there and say, okay, I don't want to spend any more money on this site, I'm happy it works, it's fine. In theory, you could stay on 1.5. End of life for Joomla 1.5 is April of this year, unless something changes. There was some discussion of trying to extend it another six months, but I don't think they're going to do it. Um, but it was a discussion that's going on, and I don't think an answer was actually made. But as of right now, the official announcement is April 2012. Joomla 1.5 will have no more bug fixes, no more security fixes, nothing. It basically goes off the site and is never dealt with again. Most of the major extension developers will stop supporting Joomla 1.5 in April if they haven't already. Some of them have made the decision that we're not doing anymore. Everything we're releasing from this point forward will only work with 1.6, 1.7, And some of them have already, and since 1.6 and 1.7 are already end of life now, 1.7 will be at the end of this month, February 24th, I believe. So they will probably start to stop supporting that as well. So the, a lot of extension developers, the only ones they may be supporting after April is Joomla 2.5. And then when new versions come out, they'll support those, obviously, but they're not going to support 1.5 anymore. So the long answer is yes, you should upgrade, but here's some reasons why. If you're staying on the newer version, you're going to get security updates. Joomla 1.5.25 is fairly stable. Um, there have been very few reported security issues that were fixed prior to 1.5.25. Um, there's not been a huge amount that have come out, if any, since they released it, uh, because they have not released any updates. Uh, the stuff they just fixed in 2.5 and 1.7 may get pushed back to, to 1.5, but that's doubtful. Uh, the question is whether or not they have the time to do it or the want to do it and whether or not it was a big enough issue to fix it. And that's been the problem. If it's gotta be a big enough issue for them to go back and actually fix 1.5 because the fix may break 1.5 and they don't necessarily wanna do that. So if you go up to the next versions, even 2.5 to 3.0, you're gonna get better security because there are gonna be things fixed with the updates. Sorry. <clears throat> Okay, so access to newer technology is the next piece, is another reason to upgrade. When Joomla 3.0 comes out, it's gonna be potentially a major conversion. From 1.5 to 2.5, you've got some major technological advances. 3.0 may introduce some even more and better ones as well. So if you want access to the newer technology, if your extension developer puts something out that they aren't gonna put in a 2.5 version, then you gotta go to 3.0 if you want it. And that's the thing, the newer technology, the longer you go with it, just confused Bill. If somebody puts something in 3.0 that they decide not to put back into 2.5 because it's gonna to have to make them rewrite the 2.5 extension they already built, then they may not put that extension feature back into 2.5. So, you know, that's a benefit for keeping up with all the short-term releases and long-term as well. If you're just sticking with 2.5, you're gonna get the support releases. You're gonna get bug fixes that are big enough. Um, they may not do all the little bug fixes in 2.5 in that time frame that they're supporting it. It's mostly the big security holes that they're gonna fix. So be aware of that. They're not gonna add any new features to 2.5. So whatever is there, for the most part, is there. They're not gonna add any brand new features to it. Uh, you're gonna have more support available for the later versions. So as people go through, you're gonna have, you know, there's gonna be more and more stuff going on, more extension developers are gonna support 2.5.3.0, you know, so that's a reason to get off of 1.5 because you're gonna lose all that support from your extension developers as well. The other reason is 1.5 to 2.5 is probably, is, gonna, is supported right now by some of the migration utilities. 1.5 to 3.5 may not be. So if you don't wait and not go to 3.5, you may be doing an entirely manual migration or you may be doing 1.5 to 2.5 to 3.5.
So you may have to do two migrations, which could be an absolute disaster. But that's another reason to not wait and stick on 1.5. Go ahead and do it now. Bite the bullet. Deal with the pain now instead of potentially worse pain later. If you want to read something, this is an article by Jim Kramer that just came out recently. I uh, saw a lot of good comments on it from people in the community. She does a good description of some other things she puts in as well um, as to what the reasoning is behind actually going ahead and migrating now. Um, the choice we're having with uh, clients we're dealing with, and Jen had said the same thing for her company, we're recommending everybody goes ahead and does the upgrade, assuming all the extensions are already there and they're ready to go. You've got until the end of February. I'm hoping that most extension developers will have their extensions upgraded from 1.7 to 2.5 uh, to make sure they're working. Most of them, there's not much they have to do. Uh, some of them that are still in 1.5 that never went to 1.7, that might still take a while. You never know. You know, it's still being supported until April. So they've got till April to get stuff done. You never know when there's gonna be a security bug that's found after April. So you could be safe until December before anybody finds anything in 1.5. But you can be certain that people are gonna be still looking. The, the hackers are still gonna be looking to try to hack 1.5. So there's still gonna be some stuff that'll eventually get found. So do you need to convert by April? Not necessarily. Should you convert this year? Almost certainly. And this is gonna be on the web, so don't worry about trying to write down all the URLs. Um, just a quick thing about migrating. Some of the gotchas you're gonna to wanna to look for. Make sure your extensions are actually available on 2.5. Most of them, yeah. Uh, do you know, or does anybody else in the group know, if somebody's maintaining a web page that lists which extensions have upgraded and which ones have? Not that I'm aware of. The, the easiest way is just the extensions that you look at for and look at them. Yeah, there, there is a, they did it for 1.7. They have a, a choice, I think you can choose. It says show me all the 2.5 extensions. They added it to the search functionality. That's how people were tracking how many extensions have converted to 1.7. And there was an update kind of running on Twitter that said there's a thousand been converted now or whatever. So there's probably that same thing still going on. It wasn't as prevalent as it was with 1.7. But extensions.jumla.org is a good place to start looking. Find your extension provider there. The best way to find out, make sure you're on the update stream for every extension that's on your site because then you're getting updates directly from that person. If there's a new security extension that comes out, an update, you need to know about it anyway. So if you're not getting your updates, then you're potentially behind and you potentially have your thing sitting there open to be hacked. Uh, some extensions may require manual migration of data. A lot of extensions require manual migration of data. Uh, I know that a lot of the form software right now, there is no upgrade utility to move it. The idea is, Take your forms, export them out of that software, put the new version on the new software, import it, and fix the problems. That's literally the way you're going to migrate a lot of that data. Um, some of the other, some extensions did work with some of the migration utility people and actually built in migrators into that utility. So some of them will migrate. Uh, and we'll look at two of them here in a second that I know about that are actual migration utilities. And one of them, stuff like Akiba Backup, the JCE editor, and a couple other key things that are almost on everybody's site. And if you don't have Akiba Backup, why not? Um, it's free. And even the pro version doesn't cost that much, and it's a really good thing to have. Uh, those are all built in. So they are actually part of the migrator itself. So with that one migrator, I know for certain it will actually convert. And it will go ahead and convert that for you so you don't have to upgrade those. So you can kind of scratch those two off your list. Even if it doesn't, it's not a big deal because they're easy to reinstall. They're one of the few that is. Um, stuff like, I think, uh, Job Social, my blog, check those things because they may have migration utilities on their own <coughs> site that will help. They may or may not. I know that an easy blog product uh, that's another uh, blogging software, you have to do a manual migration. You basically do an upgrade on the 1.5 site, do an upgrade, install it on the other site, and copy the tables from one to the other. And you've done your migration. In theory, it works. In practice, you're going to test it. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, as I said, migration utilities usually migrate only the core. 
So if it's core software, modules that are core modules, custom HTML, things like that. Um, keep in mind, some of the modules in 1.5 do not exist in 1.7, in 2.5 anymore. Like the poll module, it's not there anymore. So if you're using polls, you're not gonna have polls unless you add a new system. So some of those have gone away. Um, most of the, all the core content will migrate unless you're using something like a CCK, like K2, or Flexi content or something like that. That will not migrate. You have to do that yourself. Yeah. Same templates or new templates? Different templates. One five and two five templates are different. No, no, one seven and two five. One seven and two five, maybe. It maybe doesn't help. More or less, most of them have said yes, they work. If you're on the latest version of the template, with um, from one seven to two five. One seven to two five is a different issue anyway. We're talking one five or two five. Uh, but 1.7 to 2.5, if you're in 1.7, most of the extension developers have found minor things that are wrong. Uh, some of them have found some other things they had to fix to go to 2.5. Check out, the, again, check out the extension websites, check out your template websites, make sure that you have the latest version on your 1.5 site before you migrate up. Uh, some of the utilities will actually migrate templates, but they do not migrate the modules that go with them. So like Rocket Theme has all these extra modules you can put in, the slideshow, the gallery, that kind of stuff. The template might migrate, but the other stuff won't. So you have to do that migration yourself because those are external extensions, not part of the core Joomla, they won't migrate. Utilities may leave a lot of un unwanted stuff behind. How many people here have gone through and cleaned out content or stuff that they were testing and didn't get rid of it? Do that before you migrate to 2.5. Go ahead and clean out your site. Make sure you're getting rid of stuff that wasn't never there in the first place. It was a test you were doing. You know, go in there and look at that and see if there's something called test article or test this or test that. Clean it up. Get rid of modules you're not using anymore or that you're not potentially going to use. Uh, get rid of custom, get rid of components or other modules that you installed. You were going to try to use it, but you never got rid of it because if you leave it on there, it's a potential opening for your site to be hacked. Not to mention that it's gonna get brought across and it's gonna be a bunch of junk sitting in the back end that doesn't work anymore, it's a lot harder to clean up. These are the only two that I'm aware of. There may be more. J-Upgrade is completely free. Uh, I've heard some that there are, there's always issues with migrations, period. With J-Upgrade, I've heard that some of the stuff doesn't always come across cleanly, may not work the first time. If you're trying to run a thing locally, it may break all together. Um, so if you're gonna do the migration, do it on a server as opposed to locally, but don't do it on your production site yet. And we'll talk about that in the checklist. Everything needs to be done on a test first. Try it out, make sure it's gonna work, then you do it on production. Never just throw it on your production site and say, oh, I'm gonna go migrate this. Because what happens when everything blows up and now you can't even recover? Well, SP Upgrade works different. SP Upgrade does work a little bit different. It does migrate some more things that... We well, you create a 2.5 install and then it pulls the data over. Yeah. Which and it pulls across stuff. templates and pulls across a lot of other stuff that, that J Upgrade does not pull across. Uh, I can't remember the cost right off the top of my head, but it's not all that expensive. 20, it is 25 euro. How much? 25 euro. 25 euro. It's not expensive. Buy it because it's open source completely. There is not license per site. So if you are a person that develops Joomla websites, you can buy it, use it on as many sites as you need to, and it's all the same price. And they pretty much said that. You know, it's not a per site installation cost. So besides the fact you're going to get rid of it when you're done anyway. So grab it, use it, delete it, you're done. You know, move on, because you're taking the 1.5 site and getting rid of it anyway. I'm actually looking at using SP Upgrade. We've got a couple of migrations that are ongoing right now that we're working on. We're getting ready to start them, so haven't quite used it yet, but I'm actually gonna be using it in the next week. I have tried J Upgrade. While it did work, it brought a bunch of junk over and left it. I had to actually go in the database and clean up a bunch of stuff. So. I got to see what SP Upgrade does in comparison because I'm going to migrate to the same site with that and just kind of do a comparison. Does uh, SP Upgrade uh, do 2.5 because it says 1.5 to 1.6? Uh, 
Yeah, the link is that way, but on their site in that page, it's, it actually says 254160017. Um, as of the other day, I would not have migrated to 250 myself. I would have went ahead and went to 174 um, because I knew that 251 was coming out, so I would not have done the migration. But luckily, the client didn't get us everything, so now we can actually go to 251 instead of having to do a double migration. 1.7 upgrade to 2.5 would have been simple. Go on the back end, hit upgrade, and I'm done. So, I mean, it's literally a one-click upgrade now. But again, you don't do any of this until you back it up, back it up, back it up. If you don't have a copy of the backup sitting on your local hard drive, don't touch the server. Make sure your backup is a backup. Do not rely on your hosting environment to back up your site. There's no reason to. Grab a key of backup. The core version of it is free. It does absolutely everything you need it to do. Put it in, back it up, download it to your computer. You've got a safe copy sitting on your computer. If something happens, you can always load it back up, run the kickstart, put your site back the way it was before you started. Again, do it on a copy of your site. If you're on a pretty good host, you should be able to set up a subdomain and actually make a copy of that in there. Take an Akiba backup, <coughs> throw it in the directory, put the kickstart in, and restore it to that directory. Make sure you create a completely separate database, though. You want to make sure you've got a separate database or you're going to be overriding production. Now, what JUpgrade does is to physically take the Joomla site in 1.5, you install it in 1.5, it creates a version of a 1.7 or a 2.5 site for you, and then migrates the data over. So you'll end up with a your site slash Joomla 1.7 or Joomla 2.5 directory that's where your 2.5 version will be sitting. Go ahead and install your whatever you're going to use, J-Upgrade, SP-Upgrade, follow the instructions, please read them before you try doing it, just so you know what's going to happen next, and if something blows up, you've read the documentation. Run the migration. If you have to do migrations of third-party extensions, then reinstall them if that's what it says. Check on those sites. They, almost all of them that I've had to actually migrate have instructions on how to do it. Follow their instructions because they wrote the program. Hopefully they've written pretty good instructions too. Migrate your third-party data. If you have third-party extensions, then you gotta get the data over somehow. Uh, following their instructions, you should be able to get the extension installed and get the data. Then go in, test the site, then test it some more, <laughs> then test it some more. Make sure that your migration worked flawlessly that there's no little things you have to make notes of. If you need to make notes, make notes and say, this is what happened, this is how I fix it. Because when you do production, you want to have every single step documented before you do it. Because if you're doing this as a business and your site goes down, then you're losing business. You want to make sure that you've got a way. And, test your, and please test your backup restore. That's why I said make a copy of the site, put it in the subdomain, and test the restore because that way you've tested your backup. If the backup doesn't work, it was useless to take it in the first place. So you need to make sure you test it and put it in there. If not, then what are you gonna what are you gonna restore? Because if you screw up the migration and your site's gone, where are you gonna get a copy from? When everything is done, it's tested, you're happy, <clears throat> everything looks fine, you know what you have to do to fix any little problems that come up, then run it on your production site. In theory, you could take the test site that you just did and replace production with it, that's up to you. It depends on whether or not you have content that's changed in production since you did the test on, on the test site. I mean, it is possible to do that. So if that's what you're gonna do, then that's, you know, that then your test site will become your production site and you'll take the 1.5 production down. But if you need to do it again, and you're going to run it on production itself because your content's changed, you've added blog entries, you've had user comments, something like that, and you want to get the latest version, then you're going to do it that way. Just be aware that if you've got active stuff going on on your site, that you still may miss some content and you may have to try to get it back later. Sort of a manual process because if it's going on at the time, you may have that problem. All right, path ahead, Joomla 3.x and beyond. This is the Joomla release cycle. Releases every six months, and there's an asterisk to that. And the reason there's an asterisk is they've changed the release cycle month, starting with Joomla 3.0. It will still release every six months 
but Joomla 3.0 itself will come out in September instead of July. They found that the July, January timeframe really put a strain on a lot of people to be doing stuff at the end of the year. So they want the extra two months to get past January so that people that really couldn't work on it because of the holidays and everything else, they want the extra time. And it will actually hopefully benefit everybody because more people will be able to help. So Joomla 1.5, end of life, April 2012. Joomla 2.5, from this point forward, you'll get, I think for six weeks to two months, I think you're gonna get security, major bug fixes, it's in maintenance mode right now. After that, you will get basically security and major bug fixes. There may be some bigger stuff happening in the next two months, but after that, it's gonna be just security releases. Um, end of life for that again is December 2013. And if you notice, 3.5, the next long-term support, comes out in September. So 2.5 will go away three months after the release of the next long-term support. The Joomla 3X series, if things are going to break, if there's going to be backwards compatibility issues, you will see those issues come up on the .0 branch of a series. So if they're going to break backwards compatibility with 2.5, it'll happen in 3.0. So you may see that a, an extension developer will have a 2.5 version and a 3.x version of their software. In theory, if you make it work with 3.0, it should continue to work with minor changes through 3.5. That's the theory of the six month release. Make it work on the first one, it works the rest of the cycle. So this is the cycle here. This one will go end of life, uh, June 2015. That will be Somewhere around March of 2015 is when Joomla 4.5, in theory, will be released. Any questions on anything up to this point? Cool. Okay, future roadmap. There really isn't a roadmap. There's a vision. They really, there's no way to really set down what's going to be in a release because if Joe Programmer doesn't write it, it doesn't go in the relief. So if we say content tagging is going to be in 3.0 and nobody actually writes it, it's not going to be there. There's a vision for what they want. And this is the article that is the vision right now. If you had looked at 1617, it's actually the same one because there was a lot of concentration on fixing the platform and the other stuff. They really didn't concentrate on this on this cycle. So they just moved it forward. This is rediscovering content. Um, one of the things they already had in here that was already put in was the Smart Finder. One of their things was a super search. So they may end up doing some other stuff to the search engine itself for 3.0. Um, they're looking at tagging, content tagging. So stuff you have in CCKs right now where you can tag stuff, not just putting them in categories. That's on the vision, whether anybody's actually working on it, I don't know. You can check the, if you want to really know what's going in, you can check the feature tracker in Joomla itself if you're interested in digging around in it and you can see what is currently being worked on and developed and tested. And as time gets closer, you can actually look at it and say what has been tagged as being pending or ready to be installed or ready to go and those will be ones that will probably make it in. Um, other things. Uh, lost and found. They're going to do some stuff to uh, help search engines find and classify your content in the most optimal way by managing metadata, title, and content descriptions. So, looks like they're going to be working on some of the SEO stuff. Uh, or that's their vision of trying to get some more SEO stuff going. Um, it's codenamed Bowerbird, which is kind of a weird name, but it's Australian. Uh, the bird itself is known for instinctual behavior to collect and organize as many blue items as possible. Well, literally, that's why I looked it up on the internet. That's actually what the bird does. Um, that's why they chose it. Um, and it's all to, in the, in the bird's case, it's all to attract a mate. All this stuff here is to make our lives easier for content stuff. You know, some of the other programs that are out there already have CCK-like stuff built in. Joomla was very lacking with that in the core. That's why you got all these CCKs that were built. You know, K2 kind of emerged as a really strong thing that fixed a lot of stuff people wanted. Uh, Flexi content, JC Blood, some of the other stuff. 
were there because of the fact that the Corps couldn't do what they needed. And so they went ahead and tried to get that. Um, as I said, some of these things may not actually make it because nobody may be working on it. If nobody picks up tagging, it's just not going to make it. Um, the likelihood is if it doesn't make it into 3.0, it might make it into 3.1, but will probably not make it into 3.5. Because the idea is as you go down the release cycle, you're getting more and more and more stable, and you will have less and less brand new features added to the, to the actual cycle. So if you see features, it'll probably be 3.0 and 3.1. 3.5 will be stabilizing those features, maybe adding some small features, but nothing huge. One of the other pieces that is a really big deal, and if you're interested in it, go to ux.joomla.org. User experience in Joomla. How many people hate the Joomla admin? How many people have learned to use it and can tolerate it? What they're <laughs> looking at doing is yeah, they're doing a people, lot. How many people like, like it? it? How many people like the actual administrator the way it is? Okay. Did you it's work on so, Mambo before? No. Okay. It's so much better yes. than either WordPress or Drupal. So yeah, it is. Once you learn it, it's actually fairly usable. <clears throat> there are things that can be improved. It's not a. It's not a bad. It's not a bad interface. Uh, if you've seen some of the stuff that has come out from some of the developers, um, Rocket Team put out one called Mission Control. Um, Pixel Praise put out one called Admin Praise and Admin Praise 3. That really went a long way in trying to improve the system, uh, to improve the administrator for Jim 1.5. So, um, and I think they actually have it for 1.7 and 2.5 as well. So you can still install them, but it actually does some things. If you're if you work with the Macintosh, you'll recognize it almost immediately because it does a lot of user experience stuff that is similar to what the Macintosh handles. The Macintosh handles a lot of this stuff, which a lot of people utilize that and they kind of like it. But this one is the roadmap for the user experience that they're trying to do. Uh, there's a gentleman named Kyle Ledbetter who is the owner of Pixel Praise. Uh, he's I think currently employed uh, by eBay. Uh, he works for them. He was one of the ones that was gobbled up by eBay in their Joomla push. Uh, there's a lot of lead developers that have gone to eBay now. Um, but he is actually really pushing this. Uh, one of the project leadership team saw that it was needed and found people that were interested in doing it. There's a lot of discussion going on about it now. Their concentration is going to be on the administration side, so they're going to look at making those improvements where it would actually help on the administration side. Um, if you were not aware, the administrator we have now, there is not a Joomla rewrite of the administration console since Mambo. Joomla is a fork of Mambo. It has not been changed since Mambo date. This, when they redo it and they implement it, this will be the first rewrite and the first Joomla-specific administration console. So we're still got the remnants of Mambo and Joomla right now because of the administrator. They're looking at also building a Joomla user interface library. May not make much sense, but it'll make developers' lives so much easier because there will be custom, there will be specific, specified standards that if you want to do this, use this, and it's in the library. You no longer have to write your own user interface library for your component. How many people have worked with the Joomla interface and install a component and you have to completely reuse how to reuse the component? Because the interface is different. You can't, you don't understand, you go in and you're expecting something and wait a minute, it's completely different. It's a completely different look. And then you go to the other component you just installed and it's another completely different look. That's what they're trying to actually make better, so that all the people will have a custom library that when you have a save button, it always does the same thing. It always looks the same, so when people want to find it, they can find it. They know what it's going to look like. That's what the UI library is actually going to help with. The default templates, um, didn't quite understand this one, but they are looking at making sort of a default template for the interface. Uh, it sounds like they're trying to stabilize it on one so that they have a default template that is good that does pretty much everything. I mean, if you look at it right now, 
the bees template was created because of the fact that they wanted to have something that showed how to do accessibility in Joomla. The other one was there to show other things. Isn't that a back end template they're talking about? I don't know if it's a back end or not. They're, they're, all, they're talking about not only front end, end yeah, they're also talking about front end and back end changes. So the administration of it, they're talking about actually improving the ability to administer a site from the front end as well. So I don't know if this particular talk is about the back end or the back end and the front end. So it's kind of hard to say uh, because there wasn't a lot of description. This was an interview, so he didn't really go that much deeper into it. Um, and they're also looking at the idea of improving the sample data. If you've ever read the actual sample data in Joomla, it can be quite hysterical. Um, it's actually some good information if you were trying to learn Joomla 1.5. But, you know, and some of this stuff was updated for 2.5, but there's probably some things still floating around because it took a lot of people a lot of time to try to figure, go in and actually fix it. Um, the UX team itself wants to actually get user experience built into the idea of the project itself. So they want people to be thinking that when there is a new feature that somebody wants to put in and code it and put it into Joomla, that the next step after coming up with the plan is to sit down and talk to a, UI, to a UI designer or somebody that does user experience and say, how are we gonna make the user experience match what they already know and the best it can be? So instead of the developer saying, here, here you go, they want people to think about design as well and user experience because that's just going to make it better for everybody in the long run. Um, again, if you want to get involved with the user experience side of things, check out this site. There's forums that they're doing discussions on right now. There's a survey going on right now. Uh, so check out ux.juma.org uh, if you're interested in the user experience changes coming for 3.0. That's it. Questions? Yeah. I um, put up a 2.5 site log soon. Oh, you did? Oh, cool. And I, I noticed a couple things that you didn't mention because I've just been poking around here. In the, I want to see if I can find it again. In the articles themselves, when you go to create an article, okay. uh, there's a new set, well, you talked about uh, images being associated with articles and link, there's also three links you can associate with Oh, articles. yeah. That, if you look, image, yeah. Uh, um, better image editor, I think. Uh, but here's one neat one that I really like. Um, you can control, well, this actually isn't with editors, it's not us, with users here. You can control different editor rights by user type. And I run into this a lot with my sites, where I want certain, you know, I want registered users to get certain access to HTMLs and links in the editor, and then more privileged users to get more access to it. And there's okay. a nice template now for managing it. Okay, you could actually do that in JCE previously. Mm -hmm. It was actually possible. You, well, it, it, was a group, it was a group in JCE. Now I think they've actually integrated even tiny MCE. I think they've integrated it into, so you can actually do this with ACL or in tiny MCE itself. I don't yeah, know which one. You're not it doing it in the editor, you're doing it in the corners. Yeah. I wasn't using JCE. Oh, okay. So, yeah, the Tiny MCE it had some improvements, so they actually did upgrade Tiny MCE as well. Uh, the other thing you were talking about, there are reference links now that uh, you can actually attach to an article. It's kind of like related articles, I think. Um, I haven't really looked into it. I saw it in the article, but I didn't actually didn't add it on the list because I ran out of room. But there, you can add up to three reference links on an article now. And there's a user notes field that doesn't do much yet, but I read that in the future versions, it's going to, they're going to build off of that concept. There was a lot of discussion on user notes. A lot of people, it was, it was pretty heavily divided that people were like, what's this going to be used for? Because right now it's almost completely useless. Uh, and they were questioning whether it should even be added at all uh, as a core application, which it is, it's a core component now. Uh, people were questioning whether a lot of people are questioning whether or not the Joomla core needs everything that's in it right now. The polls was one of them. People used polls in 1.5. They liked it. They were upset when they got pulled out of 1.6. But you can go out and find a polls art. You can go out and find a poll thing. You can go out and find a newsfeed thing. Everything that's in the core right now is available possibly better. So why do we put people working on components that are included in the Joomla core that there are already better free versions of it out there, or even potentially paid versions that you get support for, 
but they do so much more. Why not have those same people concentrate on other things in the core and make the core better? That's one push right now. If anybody's heard of it, there's one called Square One CMS. It's a distribution of Joomla, but it's completely stripped down. It's absolutely hilarious to install it, look at it, and see the component menu completely blank when you install it. He, uh, one of the gentlemen took it, um, made a distribution of it, stripped out all the core functionality, and made it as bare bones as possible. So it's only the Joomla core, the platform, everything in there. So that's, you know, that's one thought is, do we need all these components put in there? How many people actually use web links? How many people actually use the contacts? You know, if you're not using it, why are you installing it? I mean, why do we have to install it? Because then I have to go back and uninstall it, and if I actually want to use it again later, it's almost impossible to find it to reinstall well, and it. And if you're using a CCK, uh, then the articles are just getting in the way. Exactly. So, I mean, there are some core things you have to have. If you're going to use the Joomla core, you know, a CMS is content management. You've got to have some way to manage content. If you end up adding a CCK, it's fine. Could you install the content manager as a separate application? Yes. So, you know, there are things like that say that, yeah, you could do that. But a core to an article, a content management system is an article editor. So I'd fight that one, but I understand where you're coming from. Everything in the system could actually be completely uninstalled except for the user manager kind of has to be there. And then the system, the global configuration, that kind of has to be there. Almost everything else can be pulled out. Other questions? Comments? Discussions? Yeah. Not so, all content. Huh? Not all content is articles. Okay, fine. Some content is different than articles. You are correct. It's actually one of the weaknesses of Drupal and Joomla, and one of my pet peeves, is that they're basically blog management systems. We yeah. call them content management systems, and they convince people that all content is articles. Yeah. But they're not. No, Some content is different than art. Well, as soon as you throw a photo gallery on your site, you're managing image content. So it is managing it. So, so he has a point that yeah, you may want to put is. the article back You may want to pull the article manager out. That Correct. Actually expands the capability of the system. Yeah, it does. But article is, is actually, the article name becomes the 1.5. The 1.0 actually was item, which is more correct. Right. It is item, not the article. Correct. If you look in, the, in this correct, you can actually put not only content, but you can, I mean, you can put tags, you can put image, you can put video, you can put actually anything almost in. Right. So it's more like item than article, but I think they put article because it just makes more sense for most people. For just the naming. Right. Just for the naming convention. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, to me, the article manager, if you're using the core Joomla the way it is, the article manager split out the way it is, makes sense. But then again, why shouldn't it be under the component list? Because that's what it is. You know, it is a component. It's a component of the system. You can't actually have an article show up on the site without the com content component. So to me, it should be under the component menu, but they split it out because of the fact that people probably wouldn't realize they need to look under components to figure out how to edit their articles. So, but that's, that's the push as to what the Square One CMS did. The guy said, I want to do this. I think this is a good idea. I'm going to do it. And he did. It's bare bones. I mean, it's, I, yeah, I was hilarious when I saw the pictures of the component menu with nothing on it. Absolutely nothing. All right. This is really more of a philosophical question. Okay. But it's triggered by a phone call I had right before coming over here. I was, I was talk, I'm the board of directors of a not-for-profit. I'm talking to the chair of the board about a site that we have to mount for this organization. And this organization doesn't have much of a budget. And the chair is saying to me, you know, when we put up the site, we really want it to last for about four or five years without having to support it very much. And, and uh, I can't say to him in Joomla that a site we put up isn't going to require maintenance and upgrades because I see that the roadmap. It's also true that anything else we would choose yep. is not going to be stable for 45 years. So that's why it becomes a philosophical question. What do you do for clients out there who are not-for-profits, who don't, don't have much money, that just want something that's going to be 
as cost effective as possible, as stable as possible for the longest period of time. You can use Joomla. I mean, you can use Joomla. There's no reason this, that you can't use one five and stay there, yes. or two five and stay there. Well, wow. zero. You know, if they're doing four or five years, you know, will it get hacked? I don't know. Maybe. But right. the whole point of the support and the maintenance that's going to happen is getting those security fixes. Anything you do, WordPress, Drupal, they all come out with updates and as soon as they get off to another major version, they may not support that version anymore, plus your host may not support it anymore. Yeah. Four to five years from now, we're going to be on MySQL 7 or, my, or PHP we're gonna 7. Be, we're going to be in the cloud. We're going to be way, 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 other way ahead. Yeah, the other end is custom code, right? Yeah. But that's going to be more expensive. So the question is, what's at least less expensive? Yeah. To go with something where you know and you can find upgrades or you know, roll the dice and maybe you don't touch it for four years, but maybe you get hacked and now you've got a developer that's going to spend a month. So I guess the philosophical question is, given, given the state of the world, how do you approach a project to try to minimize long-term costs of, of supporting it? What do you trade off? What decisions do you make up front? in order to delay that migration path as much as reasonably possible given security issues, which is probably what's going to force Well, luckily with Joomla and even the WordPress, and I don't know if Drupal does it yet or not, I don't really know, but with Joomla, it's getting better with one-click upgrades. So the fact that if you want to go 250 to 251, click the button, you're done. Same with WordPress. Um, they've had that for a while. The best thing to look at is, is your user base that will be maintaining the site, adding content or whatever they're going to do to it, can the user base be trained to do those updates? If they can, and they're willing to volunteer to do it, there's no cost at all. They can but be trained you, to send me an email. There you go. Well, they're doing cost, you're, you're, at that point you're doing cost of time, as opposed to actual physical monetary cost. So it's somebody's time to do the updates that is volunteered to do it, and making sure that it's heavily documented so that if that person leaves, somebody else can pick it up and do it. Looking at utilizing off-the-shelf extensions as opposed to custom. Uh, not modifying the extensions so that when you need to do an upgrade of an extension, it's an easy upgrade as opposed to having to go in and change a million things because you modified it in some way. Put as much of the changes in your template as you possibly can instead of trying to change an extension. Never change core. WordPress or anything, never change the core. Yeah, there's an interesting article on this for the magazine. You also triggered another philosophical question, what you just said, and that is documenting a Joomla site. Uh, it's something I actually never thought about before, and of course it's a whole separate conversation. But the moment I have it, it just triggered for me, wow, what would I want to notate if I'm going to document a site for somebody else to take over? What, you know, what would be the, the architecture stuff need to talk about. I've never given that thought. It's, it's an interesting yeah. important. Well, it, it's, you've got to give, you, you, either, you either build it into the upfront cost and you document whatever you think they're going to need to know. Well, that's the how that's to, how, how to add an article, yeah. how to turn on a custom HTML module, how to turn it well, off. It's stuff that's generic that can look up in a helper team. I don't have to document so much. It's my decisions that they might yeah. not realize the decisions I made yep. that I want to document. So, if you, so in your template, if you ended up putting in some overrides because you needed a different layout, you need to document the fact that I changed the layout. So when they go to make this change, that same layout needs to be upgraded as well because maybe it's different now. Maybe there's a security bug in your override that's still going to be there even after you upgrade the software. Things like that that were different, not just throwing it in and you're done, things you may have done that are out of the ordinary, we're not standard things, you can't just upgrade and have everything work properly. Those kind of things you definitely need to, to document. It's a lot more than that. I think it's like my, my, my default settings for new menu items, my default yep. settings for content, why I chose what I chose, my, my vision for the taxonomy so that if, as they grow the taxonomy, they're, um, they're, they're either working for my vision or they're making a conscious yep. And see, in those things you can't find. You can find how to add a menu item, great. But how do I make this menu item look like that one? So if they've got a category blog view that you set up and you made some changes to, I want five leading articles and three intros, and they go out and find a thing that says, oh, here, great, here's how I add a blog entry. 
they may not know to go look at your other one if they want it to look exactly the same. So those kind of things where you've deviated or you've done something specific for the site are the things you're going to want to document. Because they're going to want to know if I want to create an exact copy of that but a different category, how do I do it? So we run into the same problem. As a company, and I'm sure other people that actually do sites for other clients, or even for your own if you're doing an organization, what do you actually document? You know, I've had, I've got a client now I'm working on documentation on how to put up a landing page because they have specials that they do all the time that they want to know how to do the landing page themselves so they don't have to keep calling me, which I'm happy about, but you know, I, I don't necessarily want to turn the money away, but if they can do it, that's the purpose of a content management system is for them to do what they need to do. I've got to document it because it involves SEF stuff, it involves um, creating the page, putting a hidden menu, doing several other pieces that they would have no clue about if I hadn't documented it. The same with them wanting to change a menu item on their front page. She says, oh, is that an easy change for me to do? I thought about it. I was going to say maybe, but then I thought about it and it's like, no, actually it's not because it's going to affect the menu, it's going to affect the category structure, it's going to affect the SEF URLs, it's going to affect a lot of pieces that they don't know how to fix. I could tell them how to change the menu name, but that doesn't do any good because it changes here, but it still says this instead of that. So there's a lot of a lot of things that you don't think about when you're doing migrations. You know, when you're doing the migration, it's a good time to do a lot of this documentation. Write it down, look at it, because now you're digging into the site to make sure you know everything that needs to be migrated. Make notes of it. You know, we're going to keep this going forward. We're not going to keep this. We're not using it. Let's get rid of it. Same thing we did with the Joomla Chicago site. You know, we're looking at what are we going to keep going forward? Are we going to have a forum? Are we going to have job social? Are we going to have this? Are we going to have that? Those decisions are being made to try to find out, you know, what's being used, what isn't. So, all right, well, it's, uh, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Real, real short. Uh, sometimes we go through a process where we look at something like a, a complex component. And actually on a web somewhere, there's like a software as a service, like Eventbrite. It, maybe a client may only use once or twice a year, then you have to wonder, that might be the solution for them, rather than yeah. installing a component that you have to keep constantly paying some kind of attention to. I'm done. I want to thank Kendall for speaking this month. <laughs> the talk next month is on responsive design, design uh, which most of you probably know what that is. If there's anybody here that that term is new to you, Responsive design is a, is a methodology for designing templates so that they will expand and contract elegantly and gracefully as your site is viewed on large screens, tablets, and phones. So there is an HTML, CSS, and in, in, in some cases, uh, jQuery components to doing responsive design. So it, it is a tutorial in here next month. Who is making that presentation? Uh, Dennis. Uh going to do that one next month. Dennis is doing that next month. Um, so thank you. There is coffee and soda outside. We encourage you to stay and network and mingle. What I'm going to do, the uh, 25 site that I just launched, uh, sitting over there, I'm going to bring up on the screen here, if anybody just wants to play in it and poke around, it'll be sitting here in the next 15 minutes or so. And for anybody wanting to know, there's going to be discussion about e-commerce at the Palatine Group next week. So if you're going there, that's what the topic is going to be.